the islands off the boot of Italy become stepping stones for allied invasion forces. First to fall is Pantelleria. Called an Italian Gibraltar, the island stronghold surrenders after 20 days of aerial bombardment. An armada of transports and landing boats moves in, in the wake of the bombers. Fires caused by bombs still rage, even as the armada reaches shore. The combined air, sea, and land attack is carried out with split-second precision. Not a house nor a building of the island fortress is left unscathed. Allied air power smashed all resistance. The Italian garrison of 10,000 surrenders. Italian prisoners are quick to learn the Allies' V for victory sign. Somewhere in England, the crew of a battle-scarred American flying fortress, the Memphis Bell, departs for home. Bombs painted on the side indicate 25 raids over Nazi Germany. The swastikas, eight enemy planes to their credit. They've well earned their furlough home, and they're like typical American boys out of school for a holiday. With Stuka, their mascot, the gallant crew of the Memphis Bell has flown in combat more than 20,000 miles. Farewell from comrades who stay behind to carry on the job. Now, after eight months over Nazi skies, they wing westward, homeward bound. Flying with a new wing and a patched up tail, the Memphis Bell arrives in Washington right on schedule. Congratulations from high-ranking officers of the Army Air Force as the crew of 10 begins a well-earned furlough. <laughs> Gunder Haig, Sweden's greatest distance runner, is off for his first race in the United States. The event staged for the Army Air Force Relief Fund and 18,000 sports enthusiasts brave a broiling sun to see the Swedish athlete in action. Leading Greg Rice, who was undefeated in 65 starts and hailed champion distance runner of America, Gunder Haig races with little apparent effort. Now Haig's way out in front. Rice is barely in the picture. Hay glances over his shoulder to catch a fleeting glimpse of his outdistance rival. He easily wins the 5,000 meter event in 14 minutes, 48 and 5 tenth seconds. General Arnold of the Air Force salutes Sweden's Gunder Haig, greatest distance runner of our time. The United States Army calls its newest mobile weapon the Duck. Amphibious, two and one half ton trucks, they operate on land or in water. Navigating rough seas like Navy barges, the Ducks are the last word in mechanized equipment. Powerful, 
capable of performing a dozen different operations, the duck has proven itself an efficient weapon against the Axis in Africa and in the South Pacific. Here shown in actual battle zone operations, the ducks are swung from ships, ferrying supplies and equipment from transports to troops on shore. These two-way trucks are capable of carrying invasion forces from ship side right into battle. More American nurses are answering the nation's call to serve the men with the armed forces. Graduation day in hospitals all over the land sees thousands of capable, efficient young women being capped, their official badge of service. Modern, up-to-date hospital trains are staffed and equipped to care for the wounded. America is training an additional 65,000 young women as nurses to serve at home and abroad. of the Burma border, Chinese troops facing Japanese lines across the Salween River survey the scene of battle. Here on the left bank of this rugged, picturesque valley, the courageous armies of Chiang Kai-shek prepare for the drive that will win back control of the Burma road. There, winding in the background, is the road, once called the lifeline of China. Now it serves to block the Japanese from making further inroads into China. Chinese soldiers who once battled so gallantly to keep the road open, now dynamite the highway to keep the enemy from using it. Chinese casualties, mostly victims of malaria, are brought into medical stations to be cared for by Chinese doctors and nurses trained by the American Red Cross. For eight long years, China has fought against great odds. Now, with arms, men, and supplies from her allies, the United Nations, China girds anew to expel the invader. America's newest fighter plane, the P-47 Thunderbolt, has left the drafting boards and is now in mass production. A four-blade propeller absorbs the terrific power of its motor. Thousands of rounds of ammunition are stored in its wings. Guns are tested on the ground. pilot climbs aboard, fits his oxygen mask, and he's ready for a flight. Wheels begin to fold almost before they leave the runway. Like flying bullets, they streak across the sky. Thunderbolts in name, they pack thunderbolts of firepower, 